So there you go. Okay, so it is uh, 201 on uh, Tuesday, September 22nd. I'm going to call the uh, legislative session for the Board of County Commissioners to order. Let the record reflect that we have all three commissioners present. And um, uh, so uh, we do have uh, uh, item four on today's agenda is um, uh, five uh, public hearings that we will deal with separately. Uh, but other than that, uh, unless there's any questions from the, uh, my fellow commissioners, uh, chair is open to a motion on items one, two, three. Mr. Chair, I move to approve items one, two, and three, as they, including all sub items, as they appear on today's 2 p.m. consent agenda. I will second that. Got a motion and a second to approve items one, two, and three, and all the sub items appearing there under in today's agenda. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Then moving on to <laughs> hearing item number 4A, this is in the matter of revising Spokane County Traffic Code number 46.61-4155.2 at 25 mile per hour <clears throat> north road. Mr. Chad Coles, anything that you would like to share with the board? Mr. French, I don't have anything additional to the briefing and the information that you have. Okay, and it's your recommendation for approval on item 4A? It is. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Coles? Seeing none, I'll open up the hearing for anybody in the audience like to write any testimony on hearing item 4A. Second call for anybody wanting to provide testimony on 4A. Third and final call. Seeing nobody come forward, I'll close the testimony. Uh, in public hearing on item 4A and look to my fellow commissioners for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to approve public hearing item number 4A <coughs> on today's agenda. I second that. Got a motion and a second to approve items 4A, today's hearing agenda. All those in favor, please indicate saying aye. 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 Let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Then moving on to item 4B in the matter of revising Spokane County Traffic Code number 46.44.0802, uh, Restricted Traffic on County Streets and Roads, Julia Street, Lyons Avenue, and Yale Road. Um, Mr. Coles, any additional information on this? I did just have a conversation with a resident who owns a business or a business owner on, on one of the roads out there, and there was some confusion as to what the traffic code change would be, and I, I reassured him that this is reinforcing the signs that are in existence that it's local delivery only uh, to reduce the cut through traffic, but all deliveries to the to the streets in, in the traffic code revision are, are allowed under that code. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm assuming that would be uh, Kevin McCarty? It, it, it was. Okay, thank you. So uh, any questions for Mr. Coles? Seeing none, then I'm going to open up the uh, public hearing on uh, hearing item 4B. Uh, to anybody in the audience like to provide any testimony? I understand uh, Kevin McCarty might be joining us by phone. Are you there, Mr. McCarty? Okay. Uh, evidently, you satisfied him, Mr. Coles. Thank you very much. Second call for anybody on for uh, item 4B. Third and final call. Okay, close the hearing on item 4B and look to my commissioners for a motion. Mr. Chair, move to approve item 4B on today's agenda. I will second that. Got a motion and a second to approve hearing item 4B. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Let the record reflect the motion pass unanimously. Then moving on to hearing item 4C in the matter revising Spokane traffic, County Traffic Code number 46.61-4155.4 at 35 mile per hour to Chatteroy Road. Mr. Coles. I have no further uh, information on that, but uh, I do recommend approval. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Coles? Seeing none, uh, I'll open up the hearing for anybody in the audience who'd like to provide any testimony on hearing item 4C. 
Second call for anybody wanting to provide testimony on 4C. Third and final call. Seeing nobody come forward to close the hearing on 4C. Look to my fellow commissioners for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to approve item 4C on today's agenda. I will second that. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to approve item 4C. Uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Then moving on to hearing item 4D, like in dog, Delta. Uh, in the matter of revising Spokane County traffic code number 46.61, dash 4155.2 at 25 mile per hour, Tornby Drive, Owney Drive, Nelson Drive, Partridge Road, Pheasant Road, remove 25 mile per hour from Tommy Road, number 46.61.4155-4 dash four, and add 35 mile an hour uh, to Tormy Road. Mr. Coles. I have no additional information, Mr. Chair, and I do recommend approval. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Coles? Seeing none, I'll open up the hearing for anybody in the audience to look for a testimony on hearing item 4D. Mr. Joe Stout, are you on the line? Uh, yes, I am, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Can Stout. you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. I just wanted some clarification on that reduction from the 45 mile an hour speed limit to 35 on that long stretch of for me road, uh, what the reasoning was in doing that, since there's just forest on one side of the road and there's only a few uh, residents that split off that road on the other side? Mr. Coles. Uh, the, the, the reduction in speed limit is not for the whole length of it, it's for that first section up to the trail crossing. And it, it's it reinforced near the school and, and at the trail crossing. So it, it, it's a requirement for trail crossings or pedestrian crossings without center medians to, to have a reduced speed limit. It's a safety requirement, essentially. Okay, yeah, I spoke with some, some of our neighbors and the posting was just a bit confusing. So we really couldn't tell where the boundaries were. So from that trail crossing where they extended the Centennial Trail uh, down into the neighborhood, it will remain 45 miles an hour. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And on the other 25 mile an hour ones, everyone in the neighborhood thought that was already established before. That, that's true. The signage is at 25. This is another cleanup of our, of our traffic code. Trying to, to make the code okay. match the way we sign it. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for your input. Thank you, sir. So, second call for anybody want to provide testimony on 4D. Third and final call. Nobody come forward. Look to my commissioners for direction. Mr. Chair, I move to approve item 4D on today's agenda. I will second that. Got a motion and a second to approve hearing item 4D. All those in favor, please indicate saying aye. 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 Let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Then moving on to hearing item 4E and the matter of repealing Spokane County Code Chapter 7.32 relating to gambling tax. Um, any uh, any uh, questions or comments on this item? So. This is a hearing item that we have received a letter uh, from Miss Linda Green, and uh, I believe it's been distributed to all three of us. Uh, but for the record, I'll uh, read her letter uh, into the record. I don't feel that the gambling tax in unappropriate areas of Spokane County should be repealed. If a tax is repealed, it would never be reinstated due to the political climate in Eastern Washington gambling is an activity that should be discouraged. People, many if not most, low income, set their sights on getting rich through gambling, which results in deep, deeper poverty. Uh, tax helps to discourage the activity and brings in income to the county, even if it's not a huge amount. Thank you for your consideration, Linda Green, 2227 South Forest Estates Drive, Spokane, Washington. So that's the only testimony 
that we received in written format. So I'll open it up for anybody in the audience that would like to provide any testimony on hearing item 4E. Second call for anybody wanting to provide testimony on 4E. Mr. Chair, Ms. Uh, Ms. Green did call me and I sensed that that was kind of her position, but that's all I just wanted. Okay. Third and final call for item 4E. Seeing nobody else come forward, close the hearing and look to my fellow commissioners for direction. Mr. Chair, I move to approve public hearing item number 4E on today's agenda. I will second that. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to approve hearing item 4E. Any, yes, Ms. Cooney. Um, so a question for, for me, because um, I don't know that I actually saw what the code actually stated. So I guess a little clarification would be good. Is, is this just, I mean, our gambling tax, uh, my understanding is just on the pull tabs? I, I, I think that's the only uh, uh, gambling that we do have uh, uh, active in the, in the unappropriate area of the county. Uh, card rooms are, uh, are not subject to the, to the gambling tax. Okay, is, is, yeah, I, I didn't know. I, I mean, I guess I just wanted to have clarification on that to ensure that that's um, the only tax was on the pull tabs. Yeah, uh, that's my knowledge. Uh, anybody I, else have anything to the contrary? That's what I think too. Yeah. So, um, uh, who else would know the information? It would either be the treasurer's office or it'd be the auditor's office. The, the yes, letter. I guess I was expecting the treasurer's office might be here to uh, to be present for this. Uh, nobody here. The letter nobody that here. came from this is, uh, the Ar this is Arthur with the treasurer's office. I'm on. I, I didn't have any additional information uh, unless the commissioner needed some, though. Well, uh, Arthur, the question that uh, Commissioner Cooney has asked is that the uh, gambling tax uh, just uh, really applies to pull tabs, uh, but they're aren't any other activities that the gambling tax applies to. And it was my memory, but it's, you know, uh, old and fading, that the pull tabs was the only thing the tax applied to because we don't tax card rooms uh, for card room activity. But uh, do you have any other information about what the uh, uh, gambling taxes apply to? Um, well, thanks, Commissioner. I believe you're, you're, you're correct. Uh, Largely is assessed on poll tabs. I, I've, all, I've heard that it can be applied, I think, to some recreational gaming activity, activities as well, such as like crane machines that may be present in a, a restaurant or bar setting. But uh, the large portion of it that the county receives does come from poll tab activity. And Arthur, do you, can you just confirm um, how much we receive in, in gambling tax? Because I think it's a very small amount. It was around 24, so, 25,000, as I remember. Correct. So, um, so, Commissioner Cheney, last year, I believe it was about $25,000 that the county collected across 14 businesses. Okay. That's what I thought. So, so no, I'm, I think as long as I just have clarification that it's, it's really on the pull tabs and that, you know, it's, it's a very minor amount to Spokane County, that it's like we're not doing a huge, um, you know, we're, you know, there's, there's not a huge business for, for gambling uh, in, in Spokane County. So thank you. Okay. Any other questions before we call for a vote? Okay. So all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Then that gets us to the end of our agenda for today. Uh, we do have a number of uh, uh, reports uh, uh, so we can move into that uh, starting with um, Mr. John Peterson and uh, building and planning uh, briefing. Uh, so after we had our meeting last week um, we have, a, have, have had a couple people from uh, the industry sector come to us and say that the way that we monitor uh, permits uh, is we don't we don't start tracking the time for review until the review starts. So they can submit drawings, they can sit in the, the holding pen for two or three weeks before we start the review. So a permit review process instead of taking seven to eight days can end up taking four to five weeks while they're in the queue. 
And so the question is, is that in fact accurate uh, in terms of how we measure the time that uh, people are in for permitting? And if it is, what can we do to correct that or shorten that time period? Okay, um, first of all, it's, uh, there's only a small bit of truth to that. The okay. truth is that when we receive a lot of permit, well, all of our permits now are coming in via, via mail, via Dropbox, uh, or through BP Help, or through the portal, through the SmartGov platform for our permit process. Um, a good percentage of those, when they come in, are incomplete. So they, when they hit our door, whether it's through the electronic wires, they believe that they've submitted a complete application and that it's undergoing review. At that point, it is basically, I would call a, a submittal that still needs to be reviewed, enter into the SmartGov system to make sure we have all the components of a complete application. So um, I think that's a little bit of a misnomer because once they, once they slap it in the mail, just like we've seen with uh, folks uh, submitting a drainage plan, hey, as long as once it hits their, out of their inbox, it's in the county's lap and they think the time clock is running. So the time clock for us really starts running when it's, we have a you know, pile of applications. We have to go through those, make sure they're complete, and then we enter them into the smart gov system. That's really data entry. So right now we're basically, we are processing the permits from September 14th. So that's, that's basically a week of working days for permits. Myself and James Moore have taken it upon ourselves to basically go out and triage. We have a table where all the stuff comes in that is yet to be entered in the SparkGov system and then routed for review. We have taken, I've taken myself in the last two days, everything off that table that's come, come in this week for uh, all the shops, decks, remodels, um, accessory structures, you name it, except for the single family. So we are taking all those off the table immediately to get those taken care of. Okay. I've also got all the permit techs working overtime and uh, also offered the same from the planning side of the house, but the planning side of the house is keeping up on those, on those reviews. So we are throwing all the resources we can at it. But I think it's, uh, it's unfair to say that once it hits us, that it's immediately looked at because a number of them, like say probably a third of the ones I looked at yesterday, just for the sheds and barns and steel buildings were incomplete. They gave us an application, no plans, no fees, no site plan. So when that happens, then it just creates another loop of work to get back to them to say, we got your submittal, but you still need A, B, C, and D. So that's, that's really where we are. And I think we've, we are working as hard and fast as we can and expediting those that come up on a site-by-site -site basis that um, may have an issue with it. So that's what I've got. So, and plus our volume is crazy out the roof too. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments from either of my fellow commissioners? Uh, Mary? Yeah, yeah, John, I just want to say thank you for all you're doing. I appreciate you getting your hands dirty on all this stuff. Oh, it's more fun than I know what to do with. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting it dirty. Yes. I'm and I, appreciate, I appreciate the fact that, you know, you guys went out and met with the Home Builders Association and, and that too. And I think it's just really um, Good for them to know because yeah, we've, we've certainly gotten a lot of comments and I, I know it's busy with the potential changes, well, with the changes coming down the road and knowing that they got delayed, that you know, we knew it was going to be a busy time. And so thank you for taking care of that and um, you know, working hard on it. So I appreciate like, that. And see, I, we get calls every day from you know, one constituent or other saying, hey, where's my permit? And in those circumstances, we find something that's, that's on us and we'll take care of it immediately. Yeah, and I appreciate the fact that you're going to, you know, have, and that you've been very responsive to the comments and, and all of that that have come in, and some, some are not favorable, as we all know, for, you know, from citizens, so I appreciate your efforts. Sure. If you get anything else from folks, just have to give me a call with myself or James, and we'll take care of it. Great. Thank you. All right. Okay. Mr. Kurt, any comments from your standpoint? Yeah, just uh, th thank you again for the update. I know you guys are working hard over there and keep up the good work. Will do. Okay. What's that? Get the findings for that text. We approved it this yeah. week. Uh, yeah, we already did that. She got the findings. Oh, uh, I, I might have. I haven't. Okay. I haven't if you don't, it. Okay, I'll go through it. 
Thank you. That's on the small arms range stuff. Oh, okay. All right. So did did did, did the other two commissioners receive yeah. it as well? Yes, okay. So that was Good. a part of your motion earlier on. Your yeah. Hand. Just want to make sure you had the findings. Great. Terrific. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All righty. Uh, so, Jack Coles, are you still with us? Oh, actually, can we, uh, Mike Hermanson and Rob Lindsay will be Okay. I correct myself. Mike Hermanson and Mr. Lindsay. Please do it. And talk about our favorite topic, Newman Lake. No, no. right, right. No. <laughs> so it says here, Newman Lake Flood Control District. Budget. We'll be talking about the uh, Little Spokane River Watershed Plan. Mike, Al, Al would like you to talk about the Newman Lake Flood Control <laughs> District budget. <laughs> yes, it says right here. See this? You've got 20 minutes. Go. Yes. Go. Yes. <laughs> we want details and supporting documents. Go. So what do you think you're talking about, Mike? The... The Little Spokane uh, watershed plan update process. Sure, fine, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you, if you could bring up the other handout. Um, I'm not. What I'm seeing on the screen is, uh, yeah, it's so this other one. Yeah, so I'm uh, reporting about the watershed plan update for the Little Spokane watershed. Next week on the consent agenda, we will have a resolution to um, approve the, or for Spokane County to approve the, the update. And we've talked about this uh, topic uh, a number of times over the last year. Um, so, but I'll just give you a little um, kind of summary of it. Um, RCW 9094, um, the, the Hearst Fix Law, um, required an update to the Wyra 55 watershed plan. And it was a pretty um, straightforward task. We just needed to estimate the new consumptive water use from permit exempt wells um, that would, are projected to occur between 2018 and 2038. We needed to find water offset projects that equal or exceed that new estimated use. And then we needed to define um, projects that would help balance out any mismatches in demand and supply so that we could achieve, um, as the law requires, a net ecological benefit to in-stream resources. So we have been working on this um, process since November of 2018. And the final plan is, is ready to go. And um, just the kind of the basic facts of it are, we estimate that they're gonna be 2,760 new residential units um, over the next 20 years with a new water use of 2,354 acre feet per year. And we have identified a range of projects, um, our water bank, um, some new water right acquisitions being funded by state grants. Um, the Whitworth Water District has a, a source exchange where they move some water from the Little Spokane Basin over to the Spokane Valley Rats from Prairie Aquifer, um, the Manage Aquifer recharge, recharge Projects, and the Loika Lake Surface Storage. And that is going to total, if we did all of those projects, would be 4,261 um, acre feet per year. And then we also have some non-water offsets, some habitat restoration, floodplain restoration, fish barrier removal. Um, and so if you go back to that other hand out the, the map. That map shows is a kind of shows the plan in a nutshell really. Um, the items highlighted in blue are water offset projects. The um, items highlighted in, in green are um, habitat projects. And so if we over the next 20 years we'll be implementing those projects um, and um, keeping up with the demand um, as we go through the process. And then we will, um, throughout the process, we'll be, the, the plan specifies that we would be doing an annual tally of um, how many new permit exempt wells are going in and how, how many projects we've put in place and um, we're reporting that. And then you can, can go back to the, the other handout. 
Um, so the adoption process was defined in the uh, an MOA that was signed by the initiating governments. And as a reminder, the initiating governments are the three counties, City of Spokane and Whitworth Water District. And so in July of 2018, there was a um, MOA that was signed that specified that the initiating governments would work with the um, planning unit, which is a, a you know, a range of stakeholders um, with water resource interests in, in the watershed. And we would work with them to collaboratively develop a plan. And then we would, um, once the plan was developed, the initiating governments would then vote to uh, um, approve the plan. And we specified that the vote would be um, required would be a uh, super majority or two thirds or basically four of five of the initiating governments. Um, I'm happy to report that actually all of the planning unit members, we were able to gain their support. So we have uh, consensus from all the planning unit members and including the um, tribes and the different um, environmental groups have all um, are in favor of adopting the plan. And we also anticipate that all of the initiating governments will be um, approving the plan. And once we have the uh, plan locally approved, we will submit it to ecology for adoption. Um, we've also received informal kind of comments from ecology that, that it looks like um, the plan that we've developed meets the bar of the uh, established in the, um, in the law and that a net ecological benefit of in-stream resources would be um, be realized if, if, if the plan is implemented. Um, so the plan implementation, uh, capital costs are assumed to be grant funded. We're actually currently awaiting decisions on two grant applications, one for a managed aquifer recharge project and one for uh, Eloika Lake. Um, and so I think I've, presented another time, we assume that, or estimate over the next um, 20 years that a, a capital expenditures would be between 10 and 11 million to actually fund the projects needed to offset the water use. Um, and that would be over that 20 year period. We are have assumed and put in the plan that all of those costs would be um, paid through grants, um, state, federal um, grants. Um, and of course, the $300 million fund set aside by the legislature would be the main source for that. Um, the operation and maintenance costs for projects that require that um, aspect, we anticipate will start at about $30,000 per year and will grow to between 150 and 300,000 um, by the end of the planning horizon. Um, we, in the plan specified, we did not have a specific funding plan. Um, we kind of set a hierarchy of, of looking to go to the Washington legislature as a number of other groups doing a similar activity of, of looking to the legislature to fund this, this O&M um, at some level. Um, we also um, worked with our uh, legal department on what different options are out there. And, and so um, I think as these projects are implemented, we'll be coming back to the board to, to discuss how to pay for the O&M as we go forward. I know this year that we've uh, established uh, or in the budget for this coming year from the general fund of $30,000 to um, to start beginning the implementation of the, of the plan. Um, and so the implementation actually includes operation and maintenance of the projects, um, coordination with other entities that are implementing it. Whitworth Water District is implementing some. Um, Spokane Conservation District, um, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, and so we would be just coordinating with them about how how these projects are being implemented. Um, we need to continue development of information that's necessary for future grant applications. Um, the grant applications are pretty extensive and require a lot of upfront data, um, so that's one of the things we'd be working on. Um, the annual reporting of the plan implementation activities. Um, and then we have a, a very modest water conservation education and outreach component that was added to the plan. Um, 
so that pretty much summarizes the the plan and um, look forward to getting this kind of approved and adopted by ecology and, and moving forward um, and um, it's been a I think a, a good process and I think we've ended in a good spot. So Mike, uh, how does the uh, adoption of the final plan and everything uh, get influenced or impacted by uh, Stevens County that doesn't have any commissioners anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I did ask our ecology rep about that and um, she said that but she would she had spoke with the land services director at Stevens County and they anticipated having a um, if if this if it were come to pass that the current um, commissioners were not in office that they would move pretty quickly to put some in office but if if in fact that did not happen in, in a timely manner such that I think ecology said that they would move forward with adopting the plan okay uh any comments, uh, Mary or Josh? Uh, the, you, you asked the question I was going to ask. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, I, I just thought, you know, because I, I know that there, there's talk of if we could have four of the five initiating, you know, go governments to agree. And I just wasn't sure, you know, when if one can't can't actually cast a vote, but we still get the other four if we'd be able to, to, to forward it on. So, but yeah, if they, if they think they'll have someone uh, appointed in, uh, in short, short notice that hopefully that, that won't be an issue. But I do, I do want to thank you and everybody else who's, who's worked hard on this. Uh, this has been over a year's worth of work. Um, and just, I, I know you guys have put so much time and effort into this. Uh, with the consultants, with collaborating with the other counties and other initiating governments. So just really th thank you for, for all of your hard work. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So uh, for, for my benefit, Mike, uh, define what you mean by short. Short order for appointing new commissioners. Oh, <laughs> that was all that the, uh, the, the land services director was willing to say. <laughs> Okay. I asked with a, a, you know, a similar question right when this started to transpire. Um, but we did from, like I said, from the ecology representatives, um, they said that even if Stevens County is not able to um, have a decision making body in place to approve it, that, that we would, they would move forward. Okay. Very good. Anything else for Mike? All right. So moving on. Now we've got Chad Colts and Newman Lake Flood Control District. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Once again, uh, it's it's budget time for Newman Lake, and I've got Colleen Little, the budget guru for Newman Lake, here to give you all of the the details of our overview of the budget for Newman Lake. All right. Um, next slide, please. All right, so uh, there's no assessment fee uh, increase proposed for 2021. Um, we we're able to get around that a little bit because of the state capital budget improvement projects that are ongoing this year. Um, we're able to not be performing a lot of major equipment maintenance and um, as part of, and that was actually a, a, an advisory board request recently was to try my hardest not to raise assessment fees this year just because of the financial constraints that a lot of people are going through right now. So we were able to do that. Um, labor for labor for 2021 is about five and a half percent less than last year. Um, and I was able to do that because the last couple of years um, I've been really keeping a close eye on our costs for both of our staff engineers, um, our extra help in the field. And um, I mean, I just, I made the budget what it is. So um, that it seemed to fit. And then let's see what else. Um, we were able to dedicate uh, the uncovered or ineligible project management and uh, administration costs as part of those capital improvement projects with the same grant. Um, 
from the regular budget and not dig into the reserves for that. They're pretty happy about that. Um, there's a one-time easement in the budget a fee of just a little over $2,500. This is to the Department of Natural Resources for the ability or permission to have the in-lake water quality equipment in the lake. Um, it, we're, we're still not 100% to the end of this easement. We're still waiting on one thing from building and planning in order to finalize this, but we're really close. Um, just another little change this year is uh, one less tank of alum is proposed in the budget and that was to help uh, ensure that we had enough uh, cost in the budget for labor and that was actually the advisory board's request was that's how we would meet that goal. Uh, I took a stab at what the anticipated cost and how that would break down over the different months in 2020 and 2021. Uh, and what that reimbursement might look like with the capital projects. Again, Department of Commerce is managing that grant and Shannon, I worked with Shannon Berkey and Kyle Judd on what that might look like just to make sure that there's cash flow in this budget. And then, uh, although I originally had the cost of the Board of Appraisers for the remapping effort, the assessment maps, benefit ratio maps at Newman Lake, I had that off. Uh, the table, we, we brought that back up because it's my understanding it's still the intent in 2021 that we pursue that. We haven't been successful as of yet in getting a board of appraisers, um, but that also was not necessarily a cost and just didn't affect assessment fees because they um, got a loan that was approved at, in December by resolution uh, 2018. And then the last line item there is just uh, about milfoil expenditure. And that was, this slide was mostly from our the presentation to the Newman Lake community, just letting them know that uh, ecology is not gonna be funding any more treatment for milfoil at the lake. And we're gonna have to find, get our creativity hats on to figure out how we're gonna manage that. And then I think the next two slides are just of the main budget very colorful because that's how I see things. Um, and then the next slide is the um, how I calculate the man, power, and labor for the year. And then the next page is contracts and purchases, how I track that too. All those numbers just get shuffled back to the main page. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Uh, either Josh or Mary, I can't see you on the screen, so speak up. Okay. Uh, it looks like we're good. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. So uh, next topic is um, I've asked uh, uh, Jim and Mark to do a brief uh, presentation for us on where we're at with the sea pacer. Right. So. Thank you, gentlemen. Correct. Commissioner uh, Mark and I, along with Vicki Dalton, spoke with their attorney and Mr. Eric Mackinson, uh, Fisher's uh, last Friday afternoon. Uh, an outgrowth of that was Vicki was going to contact and did contact John Peterson. Just found that part. Mark doesn't know that yet because Vicki was through here about a half hour ago. And uh, at that time, uh, uh, Vicki is believing that probably we will have to contract out of house or the person that would do that. At least that's her current thought. And she's going to be developing that more. Uh, Mark, as I say, hasn't heard that yet because I've heard that within the last half hour or so. Uh, but Mark has some other things. Uh, he and I have worked quite a bit on this. Uh, Rob Binger's assistant, Vicki Dalton's assistant, and thank them too. And uh, <clears throat> Eric and I had some uh, early miscommunications, you might say, uh, uh, about the program, but I think we took care of those last Friday. And he is aware, except for the last thing that Vicki said, he's aware of, of everything to date. And Mark wanted to bring up some policy considerations you might want to look at. Uh, Eric had his attorney, a fellow by the name of Michael Yaki, who is uh, actually on, I think, the National Civil Rights Board. Uh, he's a former councilman in San Francisco, either city or county. And um, he was on, he's their attorney 
on uh, on this with uh, Eric, uh, and he uh, he was he talked to us about how this has worked in some other states. And with that, uh, commissioners, uh, Mark you might want to proceed with some of his concerns, uh, issues that you might want to be thinking about. I'm not sure. You'll you'll need to obviously, as a policy consideration, decide if you want to have someone internal or out external do it. The proponents of this program seem to think this is just some kind of a checkbox thing that you will go through. Whoever at the county does this will go through and look at some checkboxes to say, well, if this if this was met, this was met, this was met, then therefore this must be approved. But as I think some things you need to consider, the proponents of this are pretty clearly interested in, I would say, extreme environmentalism or at least environmentalism move forward. So if you look at one, who they are and what they did to come forward and create this, and then what they're asking you to do, this is actually more than just a checkbox criteria. So they're actually asking you to evaluate an engineer's consideration of uh, energy efficiency for this project or um, whether or not this seismic thing will work. Now, obviously, for the most part, we're going to look at an engineer and what they said and say, okay, we agree with you. But how do you do that new construction when you're going to evaluate to decide if they do this, then therefore it has a sufficient energy upside for Spokane County. So we're going to go ahead and, 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 and bring this on. It actually has some policy considerations around environmental issues that I think you should appoint someone in Spokane to, to help me, you know, come forward with this program. Cause right now I need someone a little bit more familiar with, with Spokane County government, what sort of, things you guys are all interested in, especially as it relates to energy policy. Um, so it could help me kind of move this thing forward. Um, some other things to consider, I, I, as I understand it, talking to the proponent of this, they saw this as an energy or a uh, economic driver for you, but they're wrong. Um, even the policy document, they've, they've actually drafted all these documents for this. And a number of these, they've put forward ideas that are simply counter to the law. And, and it, in particular, one of them is that they see this as a, a way to drive uh, money into the county, it, actually the county government, in, in terms of a fee. But their fee proposal is a 1% fee or up to, I think it was $25,000 or $15,000, something like that. But as you all know, we can't impose a fee unless it's a fee directly that we can directly point here are our expenses to this fee. Once you get this policy in front of you, depending on how you put the program together, if it's just a checkbox program, I don't know that it's going to cost $15,000 to have someone go, this document's here, this document's here, and this document's here. Um, so, so that's something to consider. Certainly we do, we cannot do the $15,000 that they're talking about. Uh, what they suggested even in their documents is a $500 initial fee. And I honestly don't know that it'll cost the county more than $500 to run this program. Uh, they, they suggest that it'll be maybe one or two, uh, uh, applicants a year. So it won't even be, frank, frankly, a very robust program, which is why I don't know that you want to hire it out. Um, some nuances of this that I think you should be aware of that I think kind of are going to create some weirdness for the county. When you, the way this law is written, you can't, so let's say you know, um, Jim owns the property, I'm the lender, okay, and you're the county. So uh, actually, you're going to be a prior lien holder. So Jim has a contract with you guys already to do something. So I'm going to have to, in order for Jim to get financing for me, he's going to have to have the prior lien holder take a lower priority. Subordinate. Yeah, subordinate lien. Okay. Then let's say I go a year now and I haven't paid. I can't do anything for a year, but now I've gone two years. Well, the, the way this has worked out, the person who has now uh, done this capital investment can only foreclose on the amount that is, not, that is in arrears. So that assessment will, unless there's no way to accelerate it. So foreclosure will always be a very weird thing in these situations because you've now subordinated a lien to somebody who maybe they're not paying that lien. Now you've got a lien senior to them and they, this person who's senior to them can only foreclose on the amount that's in arrears. So it's going to be very strange how, how this plays out. Now they say they haven't had a foreclosure in the 22 states that this operates in. I obviously wouldn't know that, couldn't find anything specific about it. But those are some of the things that, that I've been wrestling with as we put this forward. So I need someone to, for you guys to appoint someone for me to work with on this. Okay. Mary? 
So, Mark, so just uh, inform me, is anyone, any other county in the state of Washington doing this yet? No, so the state legislature approved this in the last cycle and the commerce is going to do this and any county has the opportunity to do this as well. No other county has done it. Commerce did not get the funding for this. I understand this was one of the governor's signature central things to their environmental policy that the governor wanted to do that as COVID hit, he withdrew because there was no funding for it, took the funding and put it elsewhere. Okay, and have you talked directly with, with I mean, because I know we all, they all came and met with us, but have you talked to them directly? I've spoken directly with the proponent of this, the, what's his name? Uh, Eric Mackinson and Michael Yaki. Mr. Yaki is their attorney. They actually have okay. two attorneys on this. Uh, it seems like they had someone from the lender side of this working on this and someone from the, maybe I'll call it the environmental side or the, the proponent side working on the actual documents of this. So, but none of, neither of them are licensed Washington attorneys. So they certainly put together some things that are not, not authorized to wash them off. Okay. So, so go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, you, I mean, it just seems like you have a lot of uh, questions that are still unanswered or um, hesitancy that um, I think I would, you know, I'm not comfortable yet until you get comfortable with it. Well, and I, I think for me to help get comfortable, I'm going to need someone, I, I would think someone who has a better sense of the county's energy perspective on things or policy perspectives on some things. I, I don't know the three of you well enough to say where you're going to be on on a particular issue yet to help draft this in a way that's going to be palatable for you and and defendable the auditor thought just today if i understood her correctly that maybe we would want to contract outside on this uh i'm not, i don't have an opinion on that i certainly have no reason to doubt that except that uh, i don't know who that might be someone in the financing industry someone in the environmentally maybe both uh, as I say, Mr. Mr. Yaki seems to be from the environmental side, as my my understanding, and Mark's nodding affirmatively, his background as a San Francisco City Councilman probably tells me that. And uh, a very bright guy, he went to Berkeley and Yale and came through uh, some things, but he's his his whole focus is national, at best region regional, not not to the state of Washington. I think most of his work is probably in. California and a couple other states would be my guess. I don't know that, it wasn't perfectly clear. And I wasn't sure how they rolled social justice into this, but somehow they, like on their website, social justice is one of the things they're talking about this. I'm not sure how that fits with energy policy and seismic retrofits and defensible space. I, I don't, I didn't get it. I don't know if any of that's important to you guys either. So those are why I'm looking for someone who, uh, on your staff that maybe has some of that, maybe not social justice, but certainly environmental policy issues. Yeah. Josh? So, I mean, you, you've you raised a lot of, a lot of things about this, the, this resolution or the, this, this bill that I, I did not know were a part of this. I, I truly thought this was something that if somebody owned a commercial building and they wanted to take a loan out, to um, whether it was to make the building more environmentally friendly or energy efficient or to withstand um, or, or, you know, so more, you know, seismic, you know, in, integrity in case of a, in case of an earthquake that they would then be allowed to attach the loan to the property rather than the property owner. So the, the loan to pay that back would travel with the property, even if the owner sold it. I thought that that was it. But yeah, I mean, it seems there's a lot of other nuances about this that I guess were not shared with me during the the uh, the explanation of what this what this actually does. If Eric was the one sharing that with you, I presume that he's pretty enthusiastic. I would almost say on a sales side of things, I mean, he he is eager to get this pro this program moving. Um, he's not looking at what happens ten years from now. Commissioner Kearns, one thing I noticed in the bill, it passed pretty overwhelmingly and pretty bipartisan, although Senator Holy, who I know you know very well and who is my, personally my senator, voted no on the thing, which I don't know, I, I thought of giving him a call to see why he voted against it in the legislature. 
the, the frustration I have, and, and I think, fairness to Eric, you can do, I think, what he has said. It's just that it's more to it than what he's saying. I don't, I'm not suggesting he was, and I don't think Mark's suggesting he was dishonest. It was more an incompleteness than a dishonesty sort of thing. I, that's, hmm. that's kind of what we're saying. So I don't know why Senator Holy voted no. Uh, I, commerce, in my judgment, has abdicated responsibility, whether whatever on this, because they were supposed to lead this and be some of these things that we were talking about, but somewhere between the governor and the Commerce Department, it didn't get done. And, and Ms. Leginski at WAPA has indicated to Mark that it's not likely, I think, to get done anytime soon. Uh, I know they've targeted half a dozen counties, of which ours is one of them. Uh, the others are all on the west side. They do not include King and Pierce, if I understood it correctly but some of the other mid to larger counties on the west side, pretty much northwest Washington, rest of eastern and central Washington and southwest Washington, except possibly Clark County, uh, were not on the list. So I, I don't know where I, it was more, as opposed to being positive or negative, it was just more kind of it's out there, it's confusing. I think some of the initial ex explanations given to me, and I can see to at least Commissioner Kearns, probably were incomplete. Yeah, so go ahead, Josh. Oh, no, that's all I got. I mean, yeah, I mean, when they presented it to me, I mean, it was Gordon Hester plus Yaki, and there was one other gentleman on uh, on the on the Zoom call. And and uh, this was uh, my impression was it was about uh, providing stimulus to be able to bring some of our older buildings into compliance with energy code without having to. I mean, there's no motivation to do that if you don't have access to funding. And a lot of times the funding can be uh, the, the, the obstacle to being able to improve your buildings and stuff. So, but it sounds like it's uh, getting much more involved than what was originally presented from my standpoint anyway. So I'm wondering, I just put it out for your consideration. Wonder if we want to invite Mr. Yaki and maybe Gordon and a couple others to uh, have a kind of a work session on this uh, with our, our legal counsel and kind of work our way through this and make sure that uh, what I think each one of us were led to believe is in fact what the goal is here and uh, whether it's still something we want to pursue or not. What do you think about that? I'd be fine with that. I mean, I've, I mean, there's clearly, there's clearly questions that have been raised today that, that, we, that yeah. we, need to, we need to hash out before we decide yes or no. Well, I was so. Oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know that an attorney from California and the proponent of this is necessarily the help I'm going to need. Um, it's almost more understanding what your perspectives are on this and tailoring it to where you are. Because what I can tell you is, as I looked at the, as I read the the bill, and I read the materials that the proponent has provided, they want to take this a little further than the bill permits, even in their uh, proposed. Uh, notice to the newspaper that has the uh, ordinance, proposed ordinance in it. It even talks about options where it has the prosecutor's office involved in the foreclosure actions of things as an option. And I'm confident that that's not something you want us involved in, especially since, you know, we're, we don't really have that kind of dog in this fight. I think what I was looking for is, is maybe someone to work with to help narrow this down in a way that makes it serviceable for what you're looking for. Um, because I think I can do that on my own or with some help from someone in the county to help sort of balance some stuff off of that, that might understand your interest a little better. So would it be uh, reasonable for us to have you lay out a series of policy questions that you think that we should be addressing? And maybe the work session is about the three of us talking about those policy questions and making sure that we are in support of whatever that direction is from your standpoint? I think that would be a lot more useful for the community. Okay. I, I think, and for you, you all, I, I think you're going to need to decide, you know, because it gives them sort of some incentive type ideas. Yeah. And where, what do you want to put forward uh, as, as uh, where, where do you want the money to go? Where do you want the economic energy to go? Sorry, Commissioner Cooney. Or, yeah, Commissioner Cooney. Um, I think I, I would like to have a, a one on one conversation with you, Mark, prior to us having um, having that discussion here in the commissioner's room. 
um, just so I make sure, you know, go back and pull up what they presented to me. So that way then I can, you know, take a look at that with you to see, you know, kind of what, what your thoughts are versus what I'm thinking. So, yeah, so I'm happy to have a workshop, but I'd, I'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one prior to that. So is that, is that something that you might be able to do this week or do you want an extra week to be able to schedule something like that to have a sit down? I, I do not have time this week, so I have a need to do it next week. So, so if, why don't, so if you could develop that list of questions and then schedule one-on-one -on -one with each one of us as we uh, uh, can make that available and then let's do the workshop the week after next. What do you think of that? Sounds so good. Puts it two weeks out. Is that is that a little bit easier to? I mean, I my motivation was to get it into place because I thought it was going to be an incentive for businesses to be able to help recover from where we're at or invest in their buildings to improve efficiencies. If this is turning into something much more different than that, I'm that that causes me to want to step back and take another look at it and stuff. So. I don't see a sense of urgency that we have to get this into place by a certain time. For me, it's, we need to get this in place when we feel comfortable. And if that's two weeks, three weeks, whatever that is, we've got to be on board and, and feel comfortable with it before we put it into place. I, I certainly got the sense from the proponent that, that they didn't see, while they're urgent about it, that's mostly so they can go sell it. Not so much mm -hmm. because they have some people stacked up ready to do it. Okay. Um, but I and I also think these are going to be for very large projects, not not your medium-sized businesses. These right. will be your larger businesses. So it'll, I think it'll take some time for them to get it going anyway. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why Gordon Hester was part of the presentation to me. I don't know whether he was part of it with either one of you, but he was for me representing Boma, and you know Boma uh, is the. Uh, organization for all the downtown properties so I saw it more as something for like you say larger projects than something for mom and pops on their you know, 1200 square foot rental, rental space so um, anyway just if that's, might, a, that's a prime example though is even the statute authorizes where do you want the region to be do you want it to be the incorporated area of Spokane do you want it to be the unincorporated do you want it to be all of Spokane do you want it to be just a portion of Spokane, it's going to be multiple regions all within Spokane. There's a, there's a bunch of different options for how you can roll this out. Okay. I would almost propose you roll it out smaller, mm -hmm. um, you know, countywide and smaller, and then see how it goes and change it as you go. Okay. Jim? Thank you, thank you Commissioner. Uh, I was just uh, wanted to verify. Uh, I told Eric, and I told him I did not speak for Prosecutor Haskell or for the board, but and I told Mark and Commissioner French this, that uh, I didn't believe that the commissioners would intend their own office or the prosecutor's office, like we were saying, to uh, administer this. It would probably have to be either someone hired from the outside, as Ms. Dalton suggested 45 minutes ago, or someone else within the county system. I, I just don't think, at least that was my impression. If, if I'm wrong on that, at least as far as the three of you are concerned, let me know. And, and I could check with Larry, but I'm, I'm guessing that Larry's not going to be too anxious to have us involved in foreclosures. I can think well, someone though who does your planning or your comp plan, or you, think you so? know, someone along that line might be a, a pretty decent place for this to go. Well, when they were making their presentation to me, uh, the administrative side of this was de minimis, and so I didn't really focus on where that had to land. I figured somewhere in the county we could land it, but if it's going to be much more involved well then that's a that's a different conversation so um, right, i think that's part of it. if we're having to hire somebody from the outside and pay a consultant to i mean that's that's where we're you know i'm not convinced you'll need to do that um i think if you i don't know what you know human resources you have here for that but i i don't know that you'll have to do that if if you feel like getting information from the engineers will be sufficient for for you to feel comfortable <coughs> participating in the program. But there are also a whole host of other people that they want to include as sufficient for you to rely on their decision. And I'm not, they're not necessarily, I don't think licensed individuals like an engineer. Okay. 
So those will be the policy decisions. Today. So I don't know, a planner might, like I said, might be. Good. I mean, uh, locating it in planning and development is a, a logical connection, but you know, maybe that's, if there's no revenue stream, uh, I mean, the, obviously whatever that administrative cost is going to have to get covered by something other than the general fund because I'm not going to, I'm not excited. I don't, my guess is Josh and Mary are probably not excited about burdening the general fund going into a, a, a budget year that's already going to be stressed. I mean, uh, this thing's got to be self-sustaining. I think it can be. I th honestly, it just, it just depends on how big you scale it, how, how big you, you want to open it up to. Yeah. Okay, so why don't we why don't we do that? Uh, we'll we'll uh, uh, Mark will put together a couple uh, policy questions for our consideration that he needs to get direction on, and uh, then we'll try and each uh, schedule some individual time to uh, get a better understanding about the uh, the nuts and bolts of the program, and then uh, tentatively schedule a uh, a workshop on this for Monday after next. Um, and I say tentative because if either one of you are not at a position to where you're, you're ready for that, then just let me know and we can push it out another, another week. So like I say, I'm not pushing a deadline. I just want to make sure that all three of us had interest in pursuing this. I just want to make sure that we, we, uh, we get whatever it is that we want out of it. And if it turns out to be something different than what we thought, hey, I'm happy to walk away from it too. I'm not married to it. So does that sound fair? Okay. All right. Thank you for the March of course. Thank you. Thanks for your work on it too. I know that it's anything new is going to be a challenge. So that completes everything uh, before us. Any miscellaneous items or any other items that either one of you have, Mary? Um, so I wanted to bring up. So we have our health board meeting on Thursday, and Emily is presenting the budget, and she's presenting. You know, I was hoping, I think she was had emailed you out too about trying to get on our agenda. Um, because I just feel like we need to have talked about it before we have that meeting. Otherwise, we're going to show a huge deficit for the health district. Um, we just got to start to make decisions as to what that's going to be. So, um, so I, I texted with Amelia this morning and uh, she asked uh, when she could get on our agenda. And I said, well, I want to make sure that each one of us individually has had a chance to sit down with her and go over the budget uh, before we bring it back for a workshop. But if you want to deal it up, uh, if you're comfortable moving forward from Monday, I'll just deal her up for no next Monday. I'm fine either way. I just didn't want to have that budget presented to the board without having the opportunity for you, both of you to, to review it. I've gone through it with her, so I, I know where she's at, but I wanted to make sure she'd done the same thing with both of you as well. But if you're comfortable for doing it Monday, I'll just tie, uh, uh, schedule it for Monday. Well, the, the problem's going to be is that, you know, Thursday we're going to have our board meeting where we're going to talk about the budget. Um, she's doing our initial, you know, forecast the budget with the health board on Thursday afternoon. And so, so at, at this point, she's going to show, a, you know, a huge deficit, you know, because she, she can't put anything in there for the county until we commit to it or have... A general idea that it's going to, you know, move forward. So, um, I mean, so it's just going to be a topic, Josh, for you and I at the health board meeting that, um, you know, we're we're going to get. Um, it's it's going to be a topic. Okay. And I did. Yeah. I, I did ask her to circle around with Gary uh, to to make sure that Gary was familiar with, uh, you know, what the shortfall was and and what some of the options were and stuff. So. She was supposed to do that with him sometime this week as well. Josh? Uh, yeah, I, I, have a, I'll, I have a phone call scheduled with Amelia Thursday morning. So kind of first thing Thursday morning, we're, we're, we're going to talk. She, she actually sent me an email last night asking to, to schedule a time for us to speak. So yeah, I'll, I'll be talking with her Thursday morning. Okay. So yeah, if we could get her on the agenda then for Monday. Sure. Um, she needs to determine where we're going to be to determine what uh, potentially she's got to make cuts at at the, at the health district. So um, I think we need to be, you know, able to be upfront with her and, and let her know where we're at. 
Yeah, so my, my response to her was that was what the number that she was short with the county wasn't going to be able to make up. Uh, right. So uh, she was going to either have to get it from the city or, or uh, start identifying programs she's going to have, end up having to eliminate um, and stuff. So, you know, my hope is, and you know, this isn't a surprise to either one of you, but my hope is that uh, in this kind of a climate, maybe the cities would step forward and start sharing some of that burden. But if they're not, you know, that's not only going to eliminate all of those outside programs in my mind, but it's also going to cut into some of the other programs that they have at the health district. So, um, yeah, so it, it's, it's going to be a difficult conversation, I, I'm sure. But yeah. Uh, so how much time, do you, how much time would you like to have, or, uh, have on, on Monday, Mary? Um, I would say probably a half hour because she, you know, will have gotten the information. Yeah. Thursday, but I think we need to deliberate as to how much we're willing to commit. I mean, I'm, right. I'm, I'm not willing to cut you know, from where we're at um, anymore. I just want to make sure that we, you know, that we'll continue to fund at the level that we're at. That's where I'm at. Okay. You know, are, are all three of us going to be on the at the health district meeting? Al, are you going to be able to make it? No, I'm traveling, and okay. so I'm I'm going to be on the road, so I won't be won't be able to be there, but uh, okay. uh, I've already had the conversation with her. I know what the conversation's about and stuff, so what okay. I didn't know is where the two of you were gonna be at. Okay, I, I just, I, I, I was, wasn't, I mean, you, you have the most historical knowledge of, you know, over the last decade, what, you know, what, where we've been at the county and, and understand the, the, the funding mechanism from the city side too. So I just wasn't sure if maybe that was something you could, could call or something, call in from, but. So let me ask you this question. From your perspective, is it important that I'm there? Because I can change my travel plans and leave later if you think it would be helpful. Well, I mean, I, I, if, if you're driving, I don't think you'd have to change your plans. I mean, I, I would say even if you just had us on speakerphone and called in by phone to the meeting or something. Okay. All right, let me see what I can do. Maybe. Yeah, it's just, it's difficult to do Zoom when you're in the truck. I mean, yeah. yeah. Road, uh, no, screen, and, and, road screen. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's a white paper that we've got, you know, we need to, I need to talk to Gary on some of the numbers. Um, and again, that's part of why I wanted to get the one-tenth of one percent money out of the general fund because it, it, when Kevin put the white paper together, those numbers are not you know, valid, you know, we need to identify that part of the general fund increase, because that's part of what people are coming, trying to say, you know, that we have this huge general fund increase. Well, we had that general fund increase because we had the one-tenth of one percent mental health money go in there that is not available for, you know, the general fund. It's really, you know, other purposes. So, so that's part of what, you know, in the white paper that Kevin Freeman put together, um, I've I've got to make some of those changes and quite frankly, just haven't had a chance to get to Gary to get some of that taken care of. I think Al, uh, you got a copy of the white paper and I, I'm sure Amelia will give you, it's in draft form. It, it is not supposed to have been released to the public. Uh, apparently somebody has gotten a hold of it from I don't know who. Um, so that's part of what's getting used out there. So anyway, that's, you know, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see then, Josh, on that, that there's like a 10-year history on, on funding, you know, for the health district from the county and all of that. But again, my concern is that, you know, if we don't have CARES dollars for next year, we're, you know, we still have to try to, you know, take care of the health district. And I, I you know, I'm not willing to cut them anymore from our budget, mm -hmm. um, just because, you know, we do know what the need is. And you know, if you look at those mandated services, if, if they come back under the county's apart, department, we would have to fund, you know, ensure that we're funding all of those, which is more than we're funding right now. So when, when I met with Amelia, she did give me the white paper, but she did tell me that when she gave me the white paper, it had already been leaked out and stuff. So, uh, the, so I carry it close to my heart uh, so that no one else will get it. In fact, it's right. <laughs> no, uh, so, uh, but she did mention that, you know, somehow it did get um, out and even though it's in draft form and that's unfortunate. So, 
Uh, yes. But yeah. So I will. Uh, so I'm 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 having I'm having lunch with Jeff McMorris talking about CDBG and some stuff. And so what I'm trying to do is when that's done, then I'll uh, do the health district and come over there and just leave later. So, okay. I, I told Amelia that, you know, uh, it's not good when I show up because people know that things are not going to go well and stuff. So I was trying to, <laughs> trying to be gracious. So anyway, all right. <laughs> <laughs> anything so the other thing i asked amelia too uh mary is is there to I asked her to, to one meet with gary so that we made sure that we had some coordination back and forth there but also to meet with carrie to make sure that there isn't something that uh they've overlooked in terms of what we can do with cares funding for the health district that maybe they've just been conservative and haven't requested. And so I did ask her to circle back so that we want to exhaust whatever we can with regard to CARES funding to help the health district. So I did have that conversation with her too. Okay, good. No, and, and we met Amelia, Carrie and I, and Jerry, uh, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago now, um, just to start that conversation as to what could what they're not charging the cares that could be charged to cares yeah. to help you know provide that the funding so that, yeah. you know, that that you know we just ensure that everything that properly can get charged gets charged right well and even even with the new guidance and capturing some of the salaries and things like that we I mean, just wanted to be as creative within the boundaries as possible correct so i i think they are they are working on that Okay. Okay. So we'll dial it up for Monday. And um, so thanks for bringing that up, Mary. Or we may take care of a bunch of it tomorrow during the meeting since all three of us will be at the meeting. Day after tomorrow. All right. Yeah, Thursday. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? So, with, so just let me circle back. Are you expecting Mary, that on Thursday, we're going to make a commitment to some level of funding for the health district? Um, I'm just saying potentially. That's a potential. Okay. I, I'm not there. Uh, so, um, but maybe you and Josh are. So. I don't even know what the shortfall is. I have not received this white paper. I don't know what the need is yet. So I'll, I will know more Thursday morning. Uh, before the before the call when I when I talked to Amelia, but okay. no, I I have not seen the white paper. I didn't know something had been leaked. So I uh, I assume it'll be leaked to me Thursday morning. You know, <laughs> when I'm on the call with her, I guess. But, yeah, yeah, I, and, I don't know. And and all I'm saying is I you know I I have already publicly uh, in the paper you know uh, have presented the fact that I I'm not willing to cut the budget anymore any any further than what we've cut it in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, so whatever goes wrong, Josh. It's on you. <laughs> on you. <laughs> All righty. Anything else for the good of the cause? Commissioner French, I got a quick one. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Commissioner, just a reminder, uh, thanks to Jared and, and Gil, we do, not this Friday, but next Friday, October 2nd, we do have our mental health crisis stabilization facility groundbreaking. Uh, and Jared starts at 9.30 and... Yeah, so yeah, I have, a, I have a news media advisory that I plan on sending out on Friday of this week, which will be one week in advance, which is pretty typical in these type of things. Uh, I'm gonna be sending that to both of you commissioners. Commissioner French just saw it, but I'll be sending it to both of you as soon as I get back to my computer. Um, and then I also have a run of show just so you can see a first draft of what I'm thinking for um, the run of show as far as speakers goes. Um, so were, were both of you planning on attending Commissioner Kearns and CUNY? Uh, what time on Friday? Nine, 9.30 next Friday, October 2nd. Yes, I think I, it's I on my calendar. Sure. Okay. okay. 
So it's early, so I've already reserved a room. So uh, you want to get your reservations in early? Uh, no. Okay. Anything else? Going once, going twice. All right, we are adjourned at 3.15. Thank you. I'm going to send the last one in.